All right, to start off here, I want to create a couple materials for the unit here. So I'm just going to go to here and I'm going to save this material. I'll call it Team 1 Material. And then I'm going to change the color to something like that. And then I'll save that as Team 2 Material. Then save this. Let's go into our script. And we need to add some things for being able to select individual units so and some way to distinguish different teams so i'm just going to add in a quick couple lines of code here so an export variable for team um, we'll just default that to zero and then um, some team colors which will just be preloading in the team one and team two materials with indexes for them and then we just need to go and make so in our ready function we will set um, we'll just check if our team value, this key exists in this dictionary of team colors. We'll set our material of our mesh to be equal to that material. And then finally, we just need um, a way to distinguish units that are selected. So I'm going to add in a mesh instance, and I will put it as a cylinder mesh. And let's just scale it out a bit. Like so, and then let's put some bright color on it so it's easy to tell that it's there. Okay, and I'm going to call this a selection ring, I guess. And then I'll just hide it. Then I'll go into the script here and I'll add in a couple short methods for selecting and deselecting. So I just call select, um, just show the selection ring and deselect, hide it. And now we need to go in back to the world scene here and we're going to make all the selection stuff we need to make a selection box so there's going to be two kinds of selection there's one if you click and then release without moving your mouse or if you only move it a couple pixels then it's going to select whatever unit is under your mouse but if you box select so if i click down and then drag to here it's going to create a box and it's going to select everything in that box. So to create that box, I'm going to add in a control node so I can make use of the draw um, function. So I'll just save this as, I don't know, I can call it selection box or something. And I'll rename this as selection box as well. And now on its script, I'm not going to move it. I want it to be at the top left there. So in the script here, we're just going to use a few lines here. Um, we're going to have a variable that determines if it's visible or not. This will be the mouse position. This will be the start position. So if I click and then I move my mouse, that's the position I started at. And then the color of the box and then the width of the lines that make up the box. And so now we're just going to go into our draw method. If this is visible and if we've moved our mouse, it's not at the same position we started at, then we're going to draw four lines. So these are all pretty similar lines of code. So basically what they do, these two lines, um, it draws a line from, so if I move like this, it'll draw one line from here to here, one line from here to here, and then this, these two draw one line from here to here, and one line from here to here, making a complete box. And then to actually uh, draw it, we're going to call the update method. This is how you get draw to update, basically. So that's everything for the selection box. Now I can come back to our main um, camera controlling stuff here. And so the first thing, let's see, we need to set up some ways to select stuff actually. So I'm gonna go create a get unit under mouse um, method here. It's pretty simple. It's gonna use the raycast from mouse thing here. So it just calls raycast from mouse using um, the collision mask for units and environments. So it's gonna hit both. And then we wanna check if we hit something and if it has a team um, field in it and it matches its team matches our field our our team then we return that object so we do need to set up a team here real quick so we'll just go here I have a few lines here so this will be our team this is going to be an array that holds all the units we've selected 
and then this is just a reference to the selection box, and then this is the start position. So when we click down and move, that's the start position. So back to here, we have one method for getting a singular unit under the mouse. Now we need a box select. So to do that, let's make a get units in box method. So this will be the top life, left position of the box, and this will be the bottom right. Though that's not going to be verified anywhere, so we need to verify that here. So basically we're going to check if the top left position x position is greater than the bottom right's x position, we're just going to swap them here with this. So we get the actual top left x position, and then we do the same for the y. We just check if the top left y position is greater, because remember 0 is at the top and screen size number whatever is at the bottom. So we just check that. We confirm and make so the top left is actually the top left and the bottom right is actually the bottom right. And then we create a rectangle from that. So we do rec2 and then pass in the top left and then the bottom right minus the top left. So this will be the rectangle size. And then we just get our box selected units. That's an array. So every unit we find in the box and then we're just going to loop through every unit in the units group. And we're going to check if its team matches our team and if we get its global position, its 3D position, and we unproject it onto the camera. So if it's a 3D position, it's going to convert it to a 2D position. So that position in 3D gets converted to this position in 2D here. And then we check if the box has that 2D position or point in it. So if all that is true, if it, the box has that position and it's that unit is on our team, then we're just going to append that unit to our box selected units array, and we're going to return that. So next for this, we're going to have our select units method. So var selected unit, new selected units, we're going to have this for everything we select. And we're going to check if the mouse position distance to the start position is less than some amount. And you can play around with this, figure out what amounts work. And I just use squared two because it's a little more efficient than just using distance two. So if um, we click down and we only move a couple pixels, then we're just going to raycast and see what's under the mouse. We're not going to use the box basically. Um, we're just going to straight up select whatever's under the mouse. Then we want to check, we want to get whatever unit is under the mouse, and if it didn't return a null value, we'll append that to the new selected units. And then otherwise, if our mouse has moved more than a few pixels, we're going to do the box select. So we get new selected units equals get units in box, and we pass in our start selection position and then whatever our current mouse position is. And then we just loop through. We're going to check if we actually got something. If the you know that array is more than size zero, we're going to loop through all our selected units, our currently selected units, and deselect them. And then for our newly selected units, we're going to call select on them. And then we're just going to set our selected units equal to our new selected units array. So that's it for selecting things. Now we need to set up our input to actually call all of these. So if I go into project, project setting, or input map here, I'm going to call, call this alt command, alternate, so we have a main and alternate. So this will be the left mouse button. And we're going to check in process, we just want to check um, if we just press this down, we're going to set the start um, selection position to the to the mouse position for both the selection box and our own um, value here and then we're going to check if we're pressing it down currently for clicking and dragging the alt command we're going to call is visible set it to true on the selection box and update the mouse position on the selection box and otherwise if we're not pressing that we set it to not be visible and then if we release it we're going to call select units. So this is our selection command right now. So we just call the selection select units uh, method, pass in our mouse position. Now currently we're moving all units when we call the main command. 
and we don't want to do that so we're going to change it so we only move the selected units so what we're going to do here is add in a move selected units method so we raycast we use the collision mass to only hit the environment raycasting from the mouse and if we hit something we're going to loop through every unit that we've selected and tell them to move to that position and I'll just delete the move all units method since we don't need it anymore and we'll say, change this to use move selected units for when we call our main command. So now if I run it, you can see when I select them, it shows up. And if I click to move, it moves them. And only the ones I select, I can do both kinds of select, box select, and I can select this way and that way. And you'll notice if I select somewhere else, it doesn't deselect these, which is how most RTSs have it, right? It only changes, it only deselects if you select a new unit. You can't ever have a blank selection, really. So let's uh, show it with different teams now. So if I go in here, let's just set this unit and this unit to have team one. You can see they're different colors and I can't select them. So that's everything for here.